the experiment I've been doing over the last few weeks. Uh, I've been measuring my blood pressure, ECG, PPG, before and after doing exercise. And here are some lessons learned. So I, I choose to be an entrepreneur exploring the star life, but my blood pressure only went down. So I was anxious, I was depressed, my family was concerned, and especially my father. So I found this interesting survey about depression and how exercise is uh, the most popular and effective way to treat depression. So I started the QS exercise with my father. Uh, why not we exercise together? So I, I asked myself the question, how do we measure the outcome of fitness? Is that high the weight or, or the appearance, the age? You can start guessing my age now. That's my father. So uh, how, do we, how do we really measure the outcome of a stream mile run? We use heart rate, and I'm going to talk about ECG and PBG. ECG is measuring electrical signals, PPG is more like optical. And so my father and I, we start uh, this experiment by measuring blood pressure. And we measure blood pressure before and after jogging. And after one week, uh, my father says it's magical. Uh, his started blood pressure dropped like 20 millimeter mercury right after exercise, but it comes back. So uh, I started to think about the problem and investigate some related work, and I turned my balcony into a small lab that uh, I wanted to put together some testing environment to verify some of my assumptions in my head. So a few weeks later, uh, I built a small circuit that can take ECG and PPG inputs. I wrote some Python and R scripts, and together I have the wise and blood pressure cuff to give me some true uh, readings. So I didn't build the ECG myself, but I, I managed to get a, a receiver that can get the uh, electrical uh, signal heartbeat, uh, R peak inside my, my circuitry. And I also built uh, the PPG sensor using a lighter frequency uh, converter, and that sends uh, the, data, the PPG data uh, to my uh, program 40 hertz, uh, in 40 hertz separate rate. If we combine those two uh, data together, uh, some researcher can calculate this post-transit time and use that to estimate blood pressure in a purely software base without using the cup. So I, I, want to, I want to try that. So every day uh, over the past few weeks, I do a one hour exercise, go through just four different states, resting, exercise, thinking my heart rate above 170. Then I was thirsty, dehydrated, and I took at least three measurements for a blood pressure ECG PPG uh, in, in that hour. So that was time consuming to my father. So it, it ends up only me doing the, the whole ex experiment. But my father, uh, he helped me to identify some bad data. Um, because my PPG, this is my PPG data. It's very sensitive to light and motion. So I have to get rid of some bad data. Um, I have to apologize to this graph, but this is my heart rate extracted from PBG. The green line was my rest of heart rate is around 60 to 80. And after, after exercise, uh, it's around 100, which is, um, makes sense, no more. And I also uh, thought out my blood pressure. And my blood pressure was around 120 before exercise. And right after exercise, uh, it dropped to around 100. 10, 10. So I tried to use the post-transit time and to estimate blood pressure in a purely software base. So that's, that's X on my estimation. I built a linear model based on PPG and uh, ECG sensors to calculate the post-transit time. And use the, use the first half of the data set to predict uh, the second half. It, it wasn't too bad, and, but it, it's not good. Not good enough. So if we look closer to those PPG data, you can see they're, they're similar, but different. There are smaller noise that happen across my different states. But it turns out they are not noise. They reflect the mechanical property of our vascular system. So the forward pressure will 
cause the systolic peak. And the re resistance from the peripheral blood vessels cause the systolic peak. And those two information can be used for calculating stiffness index. And here's an ultrasound machine. You can actually uh, go to the hospital and test your vascular age. And this graph, it shows the order we, we are, um, the me mechanical property changes, <laughs> and a mm, blood vessel gets stiffer. And it turns out those, change, those mechanical changes, we can actually use PPG to see those different signatures. Yeah. Now, this is the first one was 60 years old, 45, 29. And it happened in only one hour every day in my life. I, I was 60 years old, <laughs> 45, 29 years old. So that was surprising. And so I, I decomposed those single pulses and we aggregate them together and check some papers and try to estimate my own vascular age. So uh, I found out I, I, I'm like 50 years old before doing exercise. But after, after doing exercise, I become younger. And this, is, this part is totally work in progress. And um, I'm still experimenting some of the parameters and want to explore more. So uh, I post all the data on my wall, my, my real wall. <laughs> and, and I was both excited and, and scared. I, I was scared because I know so little about my data. Um, I was excited because uh, I, I slowly found a way to investigate uh, what they need. So that was encouraging. So a little bit more about me, I designed physiological uh, tools for people with autism, and that's my roller coaster ride. And I started this QS experiment with my father and, and shared with friends. Uh, that's where I'm now. Is that the vertical scale is happiness? Uh, fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there are two magic components uh, in, this, in, in my exploration. Uh, the first one is exercising. It, it's it's, it's so interesting, I want to explore more. And the second one uh, is peer support. Without my father, I would never really start exercising and use my knowledge to, to, to check. I want to build a simple system. So another hint um, about my age, the man is his artery, and I'm 34, and I was 28 this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. So the question is how how long I exercise? I, I mainly do cardio, uh, like running for two miles, and I, I want to keep my heart rate above 170. <laughs> and because that's well, it works out. I mean, I was I was in the track track field team in my college, so <laughs> um, so right after uh, I did the cardio, I do some stretch, like cool down stretch, then come back to my apartment and do a measurement. How long is that? Um, the, the cool down stretch takes about 10 minutes and then I start measuring. measuring. And each measurement takes about a minute. So 10 minutes after finishing the exercise? Yeah. Roughly. But all my data points are 10 times 10. Do you know of any commercial products that use that delay interval to estimate you know, blood pressure or cardiovascular uh, age property, you know, cardiovascular properties? I'm still trying to do some Google search, but mainly they're, they're like big machine using ultrasound. Um, oh, no, no, but do you know of any, of any commercial products that use specifically that delay method of between the, uh, you know, the EKG and the per peripheral? Uh, um, uh, I don't know, but I am sure there, there should be some. And I heard that using the time delay with post transit time to estimate blood pressure, and many big companies they try that too, to get that software estimation. But uh, 
the individual difference was too big. For the same thing, do you have to calibrate that for each person that uses it, or is it universal? Um, so the question is uh, the, the, the delay of the systolic and diastolic peak. Uh -huh. And I only, my system only had one user, that's me. Yeah. So, but uh, the stiffness index is the, equals the height of the person uh, divided by the, the, the delta t. So, supposedly, uh, everyone will have a different, met, different metric. And it, it related to some of your parameters. like to have a small little device and you don't have to go to the doctor and actually you'll just be able to tell the, and get your stiffness index and your true age of your cardiovascular system. I would. Okay. Well, here's the man. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackie.